you want to do well on step one, you better read these eight times. That's right. Honestly, that's not true. These aren't even step one books. The thing is, though, is we hear noise like that all the time. And during the most stressful part of our medical school journey, we don't need 101 resources. We just need to know which ones we should use and which ones are nice to have. That's exactly what we'll cover in this video. Plus, I'll tell you how to use each and every single one of those resources. Let's get to all those after this intro. All right guys, what is going on Lux here for the MD Journey helping you succeed on your medical journey with less stress. A lot of you guys love the step one uh, video that I made about just tips and tricks on how to study and how to prepare. And so I thought I'd make the next version of that video, which is basically what resources you should use. That first video will be linked down below and I'll refer back to it um, quite often. So make sure you check it out after this video if you haven't done so. But this video is going to cover a lot because I don't wanna give you superficial knowledge. And I also don't wanna tell you that every resource is worth your money and time. I'm going to be honest, I'm going to tell you what you need, especially hindsight being 2020, and tell you which ones actually impacted my scores and the scores of students that I've helped. Now, this is going to be a longer video because we're going to cover a lot. So if you find anything of value, please help me out by hitting that like button, first of all, and make sure you subscribe for weekly videos just like this one. So the way we'll structure this video is we'll talk about the resources that are definitely worth having that are essential for you to do well in step one. And then we'll talk about some of those other resources that you hear about a lot, but you're not sure if they're worth your time and money. We'll talk about also how to use each and every one. At the very end of the video, I'll give you another resource that you can check out if you want more information and tips on step one. So let's get into this video. Now, the first resource that you definitely need to have, and most of you guys are familiar with it, is UWorld. Now, UWorld, for anyone unfamiliar, is a question bank that has over 2,400 practice questions, which are written and formatted the way the actual test questions will be. Um, and they're about equal difficulty as well. So they cover a good range of topics. They're going to lead you to be well prepared. Now, most of you guys know about UWorld, but let's talk about some of the nuances of using UWorld to study for step one. So tip or point number one in regards to using UWorld is I would recommend you try to do it roughly two times, if not 1.5 times. And that goes into tip number two. The reason is, is because you want the iteration and not only just iteration of all the questions, but specifically the questions that you miss. So during your first pass through, you wanna make sure that you are definitely marking the questions that you miss, but also the questions that you guess correctly on. Anything you don't understand, especially if you read an explanation and you're like, well, I got to the right answer or I got to the wrong answer. I clearly don't understand the reasoning. Make sure you mark those because then if you don't do it two times, you at least can do your missed questions and your guessed questions again to make sure your weaknesses aren't a weak point during test day. So do it two times and make sure from the very start, you're doing some kind of marking system to keep yourself accountable on your weaknesses. Now, my final pointer towards UWorld, and it's a huge one because I think students ask me this question a lot, is should I start doing UWorld a little bit early to like get ahead? And the answer is no. I, I would honestly recommend you don't start your UWorld questions until your first day of dedicated, unless your school has some other policy where it makes you start ahead of time. The reason is, is that to really get a good grasp of how prepared you are, where your strengths and your weaknesses lie, you wanna make sure you see those questions for the first time during your dedicated. You can use other question banks, which I can make a totally different video about if you guys are interested on which ones to use during your preclinical years with alongside your classes. But you all make sure it's during your dedicated because it's going to give you a good picture of how you're doing and how much progress. You guys have heard plenty about your world and I can talk in links about study schedules in the future. If you guys are interested, make sure you comment down below. So let's get into resource number two. Now it's a resource that you know of, but it's not the second thing that comes to mind when you think of step one, but it's definitely for me going to be the best thing that's gonna help you raise your score the least amount of effort. Now resource number two is sketchy medical. Now if you go back to my step one video, you realize that to get a 250 or higher, one of the things I recommend that will help you boost your score the quickest with doing the least amount of work is making sure you're doing a little bit of micro and farm every single day. These topics, guys, are very memorization heavy and they're low hanging fruits, but they're often the same topics that your classmates will avoid and instead try to spend hours studying cards to kind of counteract their weaknesses. But even if you're committed to doing a little bit of micro and farm every day, an hour a day of 30 minutes of each, whatever it may be, you're definitely going to make leaps and bounds of your final score. So with that being said, definitely use Sketchy Medical. Now, Sketchy Micro is definitely a resource that a lot of you guys may be using already during your microbiology course, and then Sketchy Farm likewise during your farm section. Now, if you're a little bit away from your step one, I recommend you go ahead and watch as many, if not all the videos, and start making annotations. That way you can quickly memorize what the pictures and the videos 
for that specific farm um, section or bug is related to. Now, if you're not familiar with Sketchy uh, Micro, go ahead and just follow the link down below. It's basically funny images and movies um, to teach you a very high yield topic. So they're super effective, um, but it does take you the time to at least sit down and watch and like rewatch. So I'd recommend, because that's so time intensive, to try to get that done before you get to your dedicated, because then you don't have to waste time watching videos. Now, if you're at your dedicated right now, or you're about to be soon, it's okay. Just create a schedule where you lay out all the videos you need to watch and maybe particularly in the order that you're weak with. You know, if you don't know anything about E. coli or if this bacteria it keeps showing up on your uh, exams like Staph aureus and you have no idea what it does, put that a priority and other ones that you know really well, put those towards the end. Um, same thing with farm. So make sure your schedule is rigid and then stick to it and try to do it in within the first like half of your dedicated so that you can use the rest of the time to really practice. But Sketchy Medical and Sketchy Farm, the one point I like to make is that in my institution, the students that use Sketchy Farm particularly did better statistically on their final step one score than the students who didn't use uh, Sketchy Farm. So it just goes to show you, I mean, it's a sample size of like 240 students, um, but it did have a significant difference statistically. So definitely use Sketchy Farm. Um, it's going to be able to help you get those low hanging fruits and raise your score while doing so. Now, resource number three that I recommend you guys use, and I absolutely loved it because it taught me the most important kind of aspect of medicine, at least to me, is pathoma because it's so amazing at teaching you pathology. Now, if you're unfamiliar with how pathoma is structured, there are videos and there is a nice um, kind of high yield uh, textbook, uh, you could say, it was like a workbook um, that goes and coincides with the videos. Now, similar to Sketchy Micro, I recommend that if you have the time and away from your step one, you know, you have some time to go, then definitely watch those videos ahead of time. And there's a lot of great illustrations that Dr. Sitar will do during his videos to explain a concept. Those same illustrations may not be in the workbook. Um, so what I would do is I would just draw out and kind of make it to where next time you look at that picture, you're like, oh, that was that video that explained this about asthma. It's a great way to memorize a complex topic uh, with just a picture. So if you do the due diligence of watching the video, understanding the topic, and then annotating on your workbook, then when it comes to step one time, you can just look at the work. Similarly to Sketchy Medical, just go ahead and lay out all the videos you wanna watch and then structure them out throughout your four to six weeks. The Pathoma is highly effective. Um, and I definitely recommend you guys use it. Now we're starting to wrap up the resources that you definitely need. And I wouldn't be doing my due diligence if I didn't mention first aid. Now first aid is that nasty mustard looking colored uh, blue book that you will see a lot with medical students. Uh, and it's super useful, but it's not really meant to study with. And that's because it's this kind of facts, you know? So unless you understand the concepts, you're just trying to go straight memorization, it's really hard and intimidating to study with uh, during your step one prep. So just kind of some pointers on how to use first aid. Again, I can make a totally different video if you guys want. Just put it in the comment section. It helps me understand what videos to make for the future anyways. But a great way to use um, first aid is to use other resources that are kind of based off it. So for example, Brozen, Cephalon, Sankey, uh, these are all flashcards that people have made and kind of taken from first aid and made them into Q&A formats, which is a great way to learn my opinion. Um, and another great resource is USMLE RX, which is a question bank made by the same people who made the book. But again, they're question based versus just reading a book and getting tired. Now, the typical way of studying first aid is simply saying, I'm going to study this topic in the morning, this topic in the evening, and I just need to finish all the pages. Now, that's fine. And it works well for a lot of people and they get great scores with it. But one, it's just tiring. And two, it's not really that effective. Um, mainly because you're relying on memorization, but you don't have that oh crap moment that I don't understand this until you get to the questions. So why not do the questions first? You know, that's one thing that I mentioned in my step one video, questions over reading. So do the questions, and if you realize that you're weak in a topic, then go back to first aid and use that as a resource to understand the facts that you're missing versus trying to memorize the facts, which is honestly more intimidating. So first aid is great, but use other resources that are kind of built off of first aid. So for example, you know, USMLE, RX is a great question bank, Rose and Cephalon, Zonkey, there's several other ones, just pick one. You don't need to pick all of them. Again, those are resources that are nice to have, but first aid is great, but you need to make sure you're using it correctly. Otherwise you're gonna burn yourself out with not that much results. And the last pointer I'll give regarding practice exams is during your last week of prep, pick one of those days and do two practice exams back to back. This will be a nice mimic of the real test day experience. A good approach is to use one UWorld and one NVMe and just do them back to back. That way you can really work with your stamina, when you wanna have lunches, when you wanna have your bathroom breaks. Um, that way when you get to test day, you kind of feel like you've done this already before. Um, so it's definitely a pointer I would give you. That's gonna wrap up all the resources that you pretty much need to be using 
in order to do well on step one. So those resources, again, are UWorld, Pathoma, Sketchy, First Aid, and then finally those practice exams from NVMe and UWorld. So make sure you're using these. They're definitely worth the time and cost. And then next, let's quickly talk about some of the resources that you probably hear about. They're good to have if you have the time and if you have the money. Now a resource that's actually technically free that I think is nice to have or nice to use is Anki. Now Anki kind of goes with the Bros and Cephalon and Zonki cards that I've talked about, um, which are pre-made, but I like to use Anki for step one to make my own flashcards. Now I know a lot of you guys just don't care about flashcards and you think it takes too much time. I'll just give you a quick approach in case you want to try it out. If not, no problem. We'll get to the next resource in a second. But just as I mentioned, when you miss a URL question, or you guess on a UWorld question and you get it correct. Really, you don't understand it. So, or when you watch a Pathoma video or you do sketchy medical and there's something that confuses you, make a quick flashcard. And then you basically create a deck of weaknesses. It's not pre-made by anybody else, it's just your weaknesses. But if I had an exam that was the most important in my life and I had a deck of flashcards that represented everything that could probably get in the way of me doing well, I would definitely spend time on those flashcards. So that's exactly what Anki is, and it's going to be super effective. So definitely make sure you have some time, maybe when you're reviewing to make some flashcards, and the next morning before you get into the nitty gritty, just do like 15 minutes. Like kind of get in the groove and end your day potentially with another 15 minutes. That way you're doing uh, some review of your weak points without really like taking away from your study plan that you've already created. So I love Anki, again, it's free, but you can also use the pre-made cards from Zonki or Bros and Cephal, which work really well, but they're really made for people to use in the long term and not during their dedicated, just because there's so much of them. Um, so they can be good quizzing material, but if you're trying to get through all of them, it's just not realistic. So Anki is a great resource if you have the time, money, it's free. So hopefully you have that. Now, another resource that I've already mentioned, USMLE RX was absolutely amazing during my prep because honestly, one of the things that you want during step one is confidence. And a lot of the resources that you'll use don't give you that. In fact, they'll scare you on how much you don't know. And then test day comes closer and closer and you feel like it's it's almost necessary to move your test day. USMLE RX doesn't do that. In fact, it's going to make you more confident that you understand the basics after all those hours of reading first aid. Because again, it's made by the same company that makes the book and they just ask board level questions of you know the, the facts in the book. So if you can get the USMLE RX questions correct, that means you understand a good deal of first aid. Your scores will be higher in USMLE RX than they are in UWorld. Um, the correlations are a little bit off, but again, you want that confidence. So maybe you can end your step prep with doing some USMLE RX to make sure you've mastered some of the basics. That's what I did and I know coming into test aid, I was like, well, I can do this. And that's kind of honestly uh, what you want out of a resource right before test day. And the last resource that I'll give you guys is a great resource if you have the time, and that's the Golion Audio Lectures. So Dr. Golion, for any of you guys unfamiliar, is just an amazing lecture uh, pathology, and his lectures are somewhere on the internet, you can probably find them, um, but they're audios, files of just somebody recording uh, one of his classroom lectures, and they go through essentially all the major topics that step one will hit, and they're just perfect. I know, for example, I was struggling on the repro section um, of my step one prep, and so I listened to those repo uh, audio lectures several times. It became one of my best topics by the time my actual test day came around. So definitely check it out. Again, it's free. It does take some time. So maybe pick and choose based off the topics you're struggling with. Uh, but there are definitely things that will show up on test day because he's just seen the actual test so many times. So definitely check out the audio lectures again if you have time. Now I'm sure there's a resource that you probably use during your step one prep that you found to be amazing. If so, and I missed it, just go ahead and comment down below and help your community, help your peers, um, leave a link or something. Um, and if you guys have any questions, definitely comment down below as well. Um, but with that being said, guys, I know I was going to announce a resource that you guys can check out if you want more. So I've written a, a nice little guide that try to be really brief but to the point on how to get a 250 or above. These are kind of uh, tips and tricks that I put together with classmates as myself that have done really well in step one. And we basically put together a plan, study schedule, as well as a resource that we use to get the highest score possible. So it's a lot of tips that we talked about in this video as well as more. So if you guys want to check it out, it's going to be linked in the description. And because you made it into this video, there'll be a coupon code in the description as well. So definitely check it out. Um, but with that being said, guys, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. If you did enjoy it, make sure you give it a like um, and subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this one, as well as more to help you on your medical journey. But thank you for being a part of my journey by watching this video. Hopefully I was a little help on yours and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care guys.